ancient scripts from the heart of Africa from the UNESCO. It'd be difficult to underestimate the importance of writing human history. Writing made it possible for each generation to pass on to prosperity the knowledge that accumulated. In its ancient society, American is not a program. Lewis H. Morgan made an appearance of writing and stated a point of civilization. Karl Marx agreed with Morgan on the significance of writing in the history of society. And Marx's colleague, Frederick Engels, said in his book, The Origin of Family, Private Property, and State, that society began with the invention of writing and utilization for itinerary purposes. Hieroglyphic writing, evolved by the Egyptians in the 4th millennium BC, served as a basis for the alphabet of the Mediterranean and India, where it later developed. Hieroglyphic writing of the peoples of the Far East, China, Korea, and Japan appear developed independently from the Mediterranean cultures. The same can be said about the American people and the Mayas in particular. One of the most ancient writing systems, the hieroglyphic script of ancient Egypt, was created in Africa in the Nile Valley. But it did not influence the development of writing among other peoples on the African colony. The one exception of the writing of the Nubian, ancient Nubian kingdom of Monroe, 600 BC to 400 AD, which I believe was a result of Egyptian influence. Because of this, it is usually assumed that the peoples of the Sudan and tropical Africa never developed scripts of their own. It is true that the vile script in Liberia invented this script in the early 19th centuries, and so did the Balan of the Karums in the 20th century, but these are considered exceptions. <clears throat> it is also affirmed as an indisputable fact that both scripts were invented under the influence of European or Arab scripts. But is this true? Is it conceivable that the African people with the original self-created mm. culture never advanced to the stage of writing or some form of writing system? When the Portuguese navigated reached around the west coast of Africa, there were states in existence along the whole length of the Upper Guinea coastline. The accounts of European travelers, mainly Dutch, Portuguese, and English, but also German and French, gives descriptions of them. In the 6th and 17th century, trade was so highly developed along the seaboard coast, along as the Gold Coast, that the Portuguese slip ships carried slaves from Benin for sale to African merchants instead of carrying them to Europe. African merchants used the slaves as porters to take their goods into the interior and bring back gold and ivory. The first European carnivals were met with large fleets of vessels sent on by local rulers, some of them capable of carrying 100 men. This fact alone shows that Portuguese navigators around the western seaboard of Africa inhabited by peoples who had reached a high level of culture. Any doubt they may be in the core, the score to dispel immediately. One cause of mind said that the ancient bronze relief and sculptures are the round produce by the artists of the Ben and Yoruba people. These bronze castings have been preserved, and they have been allowed to include many portraits of kings in their air, an army commander, and other high-ranking persons, all indicative of an elaborate court ceremony. Each officer or carrier wore some, some mask of rank or headdress, shoulder shafts, masks worn beyond the belt, and some are equivalent to the modern badges and insignia, and a special type of sword is called Abbe or Eber. <clears throat> Some release shows a nobleman of high rank setting out on a journey, accompanied by a number of suits. Nobleman mounted on a horse with young men supporting him on either side. Armor bearers carrying swords and shields, and the servants holding their shields high above their head to protect them from the sun. The nobleman is taller than the servants around him. The artist has done his best to stress the social inequality in the same way as those carved in the ancient relief of Egypt. It is easy to picture bending from the descriptions of travelers of that time. Houses of towns were built close to each other in straight rows as the Dutch house towns. The King's Palace, wrote a 17th century traveler, was as big as the whole town of Harlem. The street was wide and straight, and as wide as a hemograph or the kind of in Amsterdam. Side streets were almost as wide, led away to left or right. We know this from the scripts, scraps of evidence that we have a chance to survive. Fortunately, there's enough to show a high level of culture in ancient Benin. We know that the Benin culture was one branch of an ancient, highly civilized, developed culture of the Yoruba. Since little of Yoruba culture has been preserved, we might have regarded the tales and legends of the Yoruba about their past pure invention, and had it not been for the bronze and terracotta sculptures, real gems of African plastic art that have been discovered recently. We have little information on the states that lie west of Yoruba, only the tales of travelers and merchants who visit the Gulf of Guinea between the 16th and 19th century. But these are events to show that along the Guinea coast, there were states developed culture that had to the west, north, and east, there were people of considerable and lower levels of culture. All this gives us much to ponder on. One wonders why in the 19th and 20th centuries, people like the Vow, Emo, 
Barnum and Atoma, who lived in the periphery of the West African states, should have their own writing system where nothing has been found to suggest any systems or writing ever existed in the coastal kingdoms. Why did a vowel script appear among a people at a lower level of culture than Yoruba and Adami? How did the Nazemi inscriptions come across by those living in the dense jungles of the Cross River in the Cameroons? One would naturally expect the people of the Dami, Yoruba, and the Benning, and other similar kingdoms to have their own systems of writing at some time. It seems more than likely that the state had must have been needed records of tribute received from taxes due and reported the state of the army. It also issued orders and instruction, yet the question has never been investigated. Among the scripts of the Guinea Coast are those of the Violet and Burma are best known. The Vile script was escorted in 1849 by S.W. Conley, who came away with the impression that all adult men at Bonkaru could, or at some extent, read or write, and that the other villages were always a few people who could read the native script. The American Africanist, O.R. Bates, noted in 1834, and thus even earlier than Cully, that the volume, the Vile, had been written volumes. The rapid spread of writing shows that an appropriate condition for his invention must have existed long before the symbolic system of writing derived from the pictograph symbolics and the invention of the vowel script by Muludulu Bakili and some helpers consisted of selecting the suitable sign symbols and arranging them according to a precisely defined system. Mamulu Masaka, the Liberian Council in Britain, was told how the vowel script transmitted news of a sudden attack by the enemies or the outcome of battles and other events by means of pictograph on strips of bark. To say the enemy has been defeated or has fled, they drew the figure of a man running with his hands in his head, on his head, and a dot beside it to indicate the plural. It was symbols of this kind that were used for the basic of the symbolic alphabet. The history of the vowel script is either quite clear. The symbols gradually acquired from a fund and a character and represented the sounds and syllables. Professor Augustus Klingelheim depicts exactly the phonetic structure of the language. There are syllables which differ between syllables and contain a type, two types of B or two D symbols of nasalized vowels or labor vowel sounds. He concluded they can only be have invented by native speakers of the language. Influence of the vowel script writing, neighboring tribes rapidly assimilated their principles and invented their own writing scripts. It is now known that similar writing existed among the Mindy, Basa, the Gazam and the Tamam. The history of the Basam script is, is now well known. Noah, the chief of the Vine, evolved the script from symbols that had been used before him, which had been long known in the savannas of the Cameroon. In his lifetime, Noah four times reformed the Banan script to give it more systematic form. Both the Vile and the Banan script therefore were created as, as a, a turning ancient symbols of stand, into standardized systems. The older symbols had not been preserved because they were inscribed on perishable materials, wood and bark, which could not survive long in the damp tropical climate of West Africa. The Zimbi symbols were widely used among the Obo people, a tribe of four million strong in southern Nigeria, and only became known in Europe in 1904. The Zimbi symbols are not only a real system of writing because only one symbol may be used for several different meanings and the same idea expressed several different symbols. The number of symbols was unlimited, and the way of drawing it was not systematic. The Leningrad Museum of Anthropology and Anthropology, the USSR Academy of Sciences, possess a number of these kiboshes from Cameroon, and many are covered with Nazi symbols and based on pictograms. These inscriptions are usually recorded of proverbs, the sayings of old man. It is no accident in the U language, for instance, the verb N-O-L-O -O means to carve, drawing, also to write, and the N-O tray means to carve drawings and on the kabash, and N-O-L-O -O letter means to write a letter from the word letter. It seems the records of this type must have existed throughout the Guinea coast, but it was never studied and somehow disappeared since it was never written on perishable materials like wood or kaboshes. The system of recording numbers are better known in the trade of the gold that had been conducted on the Gold Coast and the Ivory Coast for century, and gold dust was sent by the caravan routes to the trading centers of Western Sudan, Benin, Bano, Manabutu, and Timbuktu, and other towns. The gold trade continued from the 12th century to 1591 when the Sangay Kingdom was crushed by Moroccan troops. Weight was needed to weigh out the gold dust, and some are made of bronze have been preserved. They are covered with different symbols, circles, spirals, volatiles, and incisions. Studies of these descriptions show they are continual signs for use for weight. There is no doubt that the payment of the tribute that had to be recorded in some system or writing was needed for a part for the figures. 
unfortunately, nobody's taking up this problem. <clears throat> but I believe something like the system of writing must have existed in Upper New Guinea for a long time. Based on my theory on the following facts. Among the regalia of Kings of Domi was a ceremony axe with a dedicated blade. Ceremonial acts of this kind can be read since each of them had their own particular significance. King Takadu or Nakadu, 1625 to 1650, had an axe of a very strange design. According to A. Lazarang, a French scholar who studied the history of Domi, the blade of the axe could be read in this way. Above, there is a symbol depicting the flint, and below, a depiction of earth, colon, with a hole in it, donum, and together made the name Conga Donum. In Hassan Domi, France was in it with an axe depicting his name. On the blade, there was a local tree hung with leaves, I'm bound by a rope, and can with spaces between the leaves, boya, and that is this red, Nama Boya, meaning it doesn't matter. It was not necessary. It's also the name given to Le Harris by his Domi friends because he repeated the word so often. These examples show the Dom B people long ago had developed principles of hieroglyphic writing. And hieroglyphic writing has not been preserved simply because the materials they were using were not long lasting. We also find less developed systems of writing on the walls of Domi palaces that strongly, strongly resembles the hieroglyphics of ancient Egypt. For instance, those of the Nama and other cities where the early form of cartouches contained from pictograms and hieroglyphs. The Egyptian pharaoh was drawn as a hawk with a hole in his talents for destroying cities of walls, or a bull trampling a man underfoot, or tearing down a wall with his horns. Of the similar characters of the relief of Domi Palace's walls, they show the king of Domi as an elephant or mighty birds tearing down his enemies to pieces. Both in ancient Egypt and Domi, we find the earlier stages of development of writing systems. The arrival of the Portuguese merchants on the Guinea coast and a systematic hunt for slaves that followed interrupted independence development of the people of that area and doomed them to suffer all the horrors of the slave trade which prevented any further development of their native culture. Traces of early writing systems are also found among the people inhabiting the south part of the continent. An Italian missionary, Gaza Muzanin, said in his historical description of the three kingdoms in the Congo, Mutaba and Angola, going on in 1687, that hieroglyphic writing was largely used in Matamba. The Portuguese historian Brata tells an inscription in a known language which he saw over the doorway of the entrance to one of the stone buildings in the land of Minamatapa. However, this statement is not universally accepted. Some scholars believe that he may have possibly have seen a carved ornament that was such frequently used to decorate the walls of stone building. It is difficult today whether the system of writing actually existed in the 16th century territory now known as Rhodesia or Zimbabwe. In the National Museum of, uh, at Bulawayo, there's a manuscript report written by Blake Thompson, one of the explorers of the area. The, this quote is a statement of one of the local inhabitants. A man on Leno declared that the Yuma people who lived on the banks of the Zambezi once possessed manuscripts written on skins. They was kept at a temple in Morama, where they copied from time to time as the leather parish. The copyists tried to imitate the systems exactly though they were not know their meaning. It's a pity that Blake Thompson's report and the copies of these symbols preserved in the same museums have not been published. The hieroglyphic inscriptions displayed discovered on the cliffs of Skumji near Tinti, Mozambique, in the middle of research of the Zambezi, published in 1896. This inscription did not seem to attract much attention although in the day it remains the only evidence of an ancient writing system in South Africa. It is rarely to be a hoax since it's discovered at the end of the last century when nobody was interested in the theory of the African people. However, it was a mistake to draw any definite conclusion until further discoveries were made. We made sure that many people of the Guinea coast, people who are free of outside influence until the 15th century, had rudiments systems and writings, even developed systems. The people of the Sudan in East Africa came under the influence of Arab culture and Islam and created their own script for the basis of Arabic. Just the annotations of the Arabic alphabet were made to suit the needs of the Turkish and Persian language, so writing systems of Arabic characters were devised by many African people. Among the languages so written may mention is Swahili with full of its rich and literature and those of Western Sudan, Hassa, Fube, Karme, Mandi, and others. Normally, if you get the writing of Ethiopia, whose original script was devised in the early Christian era from South Arabian Sabian script. In Christian Nubia, the ancient Nubian writing system was developed in the 10th century under the influence of the Coptic strip. Nobody ever suspected the existence of a Nubia script until 1906, when among the Arabs and the Coptic manuscript received by the Berlin Museum from Egypt, was some unknown script was discovered. 
Studies show that it was written in ancient Nubian language, what makes it one of the oldest written forms of African languages proper. Today, as in the past century, the Telegs of the Sahara, and especially the script known as the Tingling, has developed of the ancient Libyan and Punic scripts used in North Africa at the time of Carthage in the 2nd century BC. Now that most African people have freed themselves from colonial dependence, the problem of the scripts for African language has become more urgent. All new independent states have naturally chosen as their primary task of achievement of economic dependence. This required them to develop their own industry as rapidly as possible, to build factories, construct ports, ports with modern equipment, and create highways and railroad networks to resolve small town planning problems. All which require skilled personnel, engineers, technicians, and an army of proficient workers. Such personnel can only be trained if the people are literate. There is no doubt that the English and French and perhaps other European language will remain the basic language for secondary and higher education in the country for tropical Africa. Primary education, however, must give the tro- local give in the local language. Among local people in African country, there are a great desire to learn all sections of the population are eager for knowledge. I have seen Africans try to devise an alphabet up for their own peoples. Different people have different ideas about how the problem to be solved. Some propose to devise a system like the vowel or the berm, which have already spoken, and to make up their own alphabet form. Others suggest using Arabic alphabet as a base. The third group and its members form the majority want to take the Latin alphabet and adapt it to the phonetic system of their own language. In this field, there are too many difficulties. The most widespread and best established systems of the now existing writing of those of Swahili and Ahasa is based on the Latin alphabet. The two scripts are similar since they use English combinations, pronunciations, and Latin letters, and in combinations, although there are some slight differences. Swahili, for instance, used English combinations of CH and SH, while Hasa used C instead of CH, but uses SH like Swahili. The vowels are given not in English value, but also the continual punctuation, say the British. In the former English, French colonies where the teaching of local language in schools is forbidden, the work of creating the script has, has begun from scratch. Well, you know, it just shows that right here that we had a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of writing before the European came along. And also, we got to understand that we kind of did this to ourselves. In the most recent con- conference, the language was held at Bahama on the aspects of the USNCO. It dealt with the alphabet use for the chief language of the Western Sudan, Hassa, Manda, Connery, Faluni, Tamash, and Songhai. The aim of the conference is to bring a court into one writing of these languages through the production of a standardized alphabet. So when you, when we've been colonized, as I said, there's been many ancient scripts from Africa, going back to the BC level, and he names off a couple of the artists, and this is from the UN, that names off a couple of these. We need to get back to these things of our ancient thing before colonization, and our ancient way of thinking. You know, that's a way of building and starting up a civilization. You know, some people might say over here in the States that Ebonics and stuff like that, and you know, Okay, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? If that's how we going to be and speak among ourselves, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. You know what I'm saying? But it's something original. But it need to be something original and something based off our culture and things that we do as a people. You know, I love y'all. You know, I keep doing this for y'all. You know, much respect to the ancestors and all those that did the writing. Because, you know, all this stuff was destroyed by the Europeans so, and it helped perpetuate a white supremacy myth. That we never had a writing thing, which is a falsehood of an uber, uber falsehood. You know, so keep on banging this beast. Much love to y'all and keep on pushing forward. Hey, y'all have a wonderful day and subscribe to the channel. Peace. Also want to say the Nimsy writing the writing from West Africa is also found here in the United States and in the Caribbean. They don't talk that up and bring that up. That's why they try. That's another reason why they try, the Europeans try to say that we didn't have no writing. This the Nimsy writing. This stuff that's on right now. While I'm speaking through, it's in Haiti. It's in Puerto Rico. It's in, on Saint Vincent. It's all over. So don't let them trick you out with trickology. Hey, much love and subscribe to the channel, man. You keep on doing this. What we-